Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Carl from Planet 40K and today we're going to do a review from the Necron Army Luminous Suarez. Okay, so this model actually dropped just before the Indominus box set launched. It was released in the Psychic Awakening book. Um, so Illuminus Suarez comes in at 145 points or 7 power level if you're playing power. Um, he's a unit character that comes in the HQ sections from your Necron options. So his stats are as follows. Uh, movement 8, Weapon Skill 3 plus, Ballistic Skill 3 plus, Strength and Toughness 6, Wound 7, Attacks 4, 10 Leadership and a 3 up save. So pretty decent stats, pretty quick at 8 inch, so he, so he can be keeping up with those other units from the new box set such as the Scorpet Destroyers or the Crypto Thralls. Uh, pretty decent strength and toughness, a lot of wounds too. So I don't think he's going to be a pushover. So in terms of key words, um, nothing of note really apart from the fact that he's a cryptic. So that's that's going to be quite decent really. And you'll, you'll see why later in the video when it comes to ability stratagems and whatnot. So speaking of abilities, he has a lot of them. Um, the first one is Master Technomancer. So this adds one to reanimation protocol rolls on friendly Necron units within three inches of this model. Um, a unit cannot benefit from both the Master Technomancer ability and the Standard Technomancer ability at the same turn. So the normal Cryptex have the Standard Technomancer ability, so it clearly explains that they don't stack together. However, it doesn't say that you can't stack this ability with the Canoptic Reanimators version of the ability, the Nano Scarab Reanimation Beam. Um, we may see this FAQ, I'm not sure, but at the moment it's not. So you, if you have both of them, you can add two to your reanimation role, which is pretty decent. Also, the Cryptic version only works with units of the same dynasty, whereas the Suarez's ability works across all dynasties. So you can have multiple dynasty detachments in your list and you, they'll all benefit at once. So his second ability, uh, Mechanical Augmentation. So at the end of your movement phase, you can select one Necron or Immortals unit that is within six inches of the model. And you basically roll a D3 and you give them an extra buff. So if you get a one on the D3, it's a strength plus one. If you get a two on the D3, it'll be uh, plus one to the toughness. And if you're getting a three on the D3, you'll give them plus one to the ballistic skill. So this can be extremely powerful. I mean, there are countless combos that you can do alongside these strat with the stratagems and abilities again. Okay, it is a random D3 roll, but they're all pretty decent. Two of them are probably more favorable than the other one. And the toughness, I'd say, is the best one. But on your shoot your warriors and immortals, you, you will also want the ballistic skill as well. It's just the strength that's not as great. But if you get caught in combat, it can be handy as well. So it's not all that bad. So his third ability, Atomic Emergy manipulator so if he destroys a model in the fight phase then you can basically use the mechanical augmentation ability again as if it was the movement phase now at first this seems decent but to be honest you're rarely going to see this because by the time he gets into combat and kills a unit you should have already buffed all your warriors and immortals up by then so they can only carry one augmentation per squad as well for the for the entire battle so it, you might get it off every now and then but it's going to be quite rare fourth ability Empiric Overcharger. When a psychic test has been taken from an enemy psyker within nine inches, the enemy psyker suffers perils of the warp on a dice roll that includes any doubles. So normally it's just doubles of ones and sixes that suffer perils of the warp, but it's now any doubles. Um, it's a nice little anti psyker, especially as Necrons don't actually have any anti psychers for the Deny the Witches. But the only issue with this is it's only nine inch, so it's not that great, but it's something. It's better than nothing. Uh, his last ability, Living Metal, which is quite standard on all the um, Necron characters where you just regain a lost wound at the start of your turn. Um, it's, it's pretty decent on him because he starts with seven wounds. So for your enemy to get through all seven in one turn when he's a character under ten wounds is it's pretty difficult. So this is going to definitely be coming in use. So that's all his abilities. Let's get on to his ranged war gear to start with. So he's got an Eldritch Lance. So this lance is actually both melee and range, but I'll go over the range part first. Um, it's strength 8, which is a fantastic strength, as it means even your toughness 7 vehicles are being wounded on 3s. And this is a D3 shot, so, so this has D3 shots with minus 4 AP, so they're pretty much going to need an invun save to not take the damage. And then you've got the D6 damage to go on top, so that's it's pretty nasty, I like that. 
So with each single shot, you hit on a three plus, you've got a two in three chance of succeeding with each hit. Versus toughness three and four, you're going to be requiring a two plus to wound. Versus toughness five, six and seven, you're going to need a three plus to wound. Toughness eight, you're going to need a four plus to wound. And toughness nine onwards, you're going to need a five plus. All with minus four AP and D6 damage. So like I said, they're going to be needing inbuns to, to not take the damage with that D6. Um, bear in mind, this is also an assault weapon, not a heavy weapon. So you can still move with it. You could even advance with it um, and then shoot and take the minus one modifier to hit. And keep an eye out, actually, because in, um, in the new 9th edition, the modifiers are capped at minus one or plus one. So if you've already got a minus one nerf on your, on your model, say, for example, you've, somebody's cast the horror on you to give you minus one to hit, or, or maybe you're firing against an aircraft model, which is minus one to hit, then you may as well take advantage of it and do your advance move because you're not going to get another minus one to hit because it's capped at minus one. So bear that in mind. Um, so let's move on to the melee side of things. Um, again, it's the Eldritch Lance. It is strength plus one. So he starts off at strength six base, so that becomes strength seven. Minus three AP, two damage. Um, it's not as good as the range version of the weapon, but it's still pretty decent. It's quite similar to a war scythe in some ways. So he's getting four attacks, hitting on three, so you should be getting about three hits. Against toughness three, you're needing two to wound, so you should be getting two or three wounds approximately. Against toughness 4, 5, and 6, you now need 3s to wound, so roughly 2 of those should go through. Against toughness 7, it's 4s to wound, so between 1 and 2 wound, depending on your luck. Against toughness 8 onwards, you're going to need 5, so you should be getting 1 wound there. Uh, with the minus 3 AP, you'll be going up against 6 up saves or in buns. There's a good chance of doing a lot of damage, and it's 2 damage a piece, so quite decent there. He does have a second melee weapon, which is it's actually his legs. He's got impaling legs. So when you attack with this model, you get two additional attacks with his legs. Uh, it's that strength user, so strength six, minus two AP and single damage. So it's not the greatest weapon, but it's, it's on top of his attacks. Um, it, this will help to clear out an extra model or two. So looking at some of the new dynasties that are going to be coming out in the new codex, um, there's a few that caught my eye. So firstly, the Mephrit dynasty adds three plus to the range weapons. And if you're within half the range, you add minus one AP to the weapon. So because his Eldritch Lance is only 18 inches, this, this is not bad. So it gets it to 21 inches. And if you're within half of that, it becomes minus five AP. Although you probably won't need that. It's a bit overkill. And most two plus save models will have an inbun. But not bad for the range. The Novak Dynasty comes with a plus one to charge roll. So if you like to get him into combat, it's not bad. And if you do charge, you'll be gaining minus one AP to the weapon, making it a minus four. And that's on the lance or a minus three on the legs. I just wouldn't be throwing him in the, into combat with sort of elite units. Um, you can go against other HQs, but watch out for those like Thunder Hammers and stuff like that. Uh, the Shere Khan, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right again, uh, it gives you a 5 plus feel no pain versus mortal wounds, which will help against things like smite. You also get to re-roll one wound roll in the phase, so not bad options are there. And the Nephric Dynasty Code gives you 6 plus invulnerable save, which he hasn't got one, so at least it's something there. It also gives you an auto 6 to advance, and you can do this through models. You don't have to go around them, and as long as obviously you end up not in engagement range. Obviously, bear in mind advancing will give you that minus one modifier to hit. You can also use this beam to fall back um, out of combat. And again, you can go through enemy models. So it's, it's quite similar to having the fly keyword. You can just get yourself out of dodge that way. Uh, the other two dynasties don't really benefit him, so I'm not going to go into those. So looking at some of the new models released recently, the Crypto Thralls are a nice gem to synergize with Suarez, as he is a cryptic. So they effectively shield him from all range attacks, and that includes snipers. The Crypto Thralls are only 40 points each for the pair and don't take up a detachment slot, so I'd suggest taking them. Reason being is that the model doesn't come with an invun save, so you want to be giving them as much protection as you possibly can with these. And they can keep alongside them because they've also got the 8-inch movement, and when they're with a Cryptek, they get a massive 12 attacks. So that's not too shabby. <clears throat> There's also a few current stratagems that will assist him here. Firstly, the Enhanced Reanimation Protocols, where for 2 CP, you can reroll 1s for the reanimation protocols. So if you pair this with Suarez's plus one to reanimation, then you're needing four plus re-rolling the ones. You could go further, like we said already, and take the Canoptic Reanimator. 
So stack that on, that will make it three plus re-rolling one. So that's quite a tasty little combo to keep your guys alive. Although I'm sure it will attract a lot of uh, enemy gunfire. So Entropic Strike may be a handy stratagem to use for one CP. You simply remove your opponent's invulnerable save on the first attacks that you take. So if you get caught up in, say, a HQ versus HQ fight, you'll whack that on your opponent's HQ model. You could even go the extra mile here for another CP, use Disruption Fields and add plus one strength to yourself, giving you the, the strength eight weapon rather than strength seven, which could potentially be making you wound on twos. And again, it's minus three AP, two damage with no inbuns. So very handy there. Another stratagem that doesn't affect him so much, but it affects others around him. Um, it's called Repair Subroutine. So for two CP, you can effectively give a canoptic unit reanimation protocols which they don't actually have so if you've got say a squad of uh, wraiths around illumina suarez you can spend it on them to give them reanimation protocols and then they can benefit from his plus one from his master technomancer rule and like we already said before you can get the the plus one with the enhanced reanimation protocol stratagem as well so there's loads of combos here the uh, last one to mention on the stratagems list uh, resurrection protocols which is where is if Illumina Suarez is slain for one CP, you roll a four plus and you're standing back up again on one wound remaining. Um, it's quite situational, but it could potentially win you the game if your opponent's secondary objectives are to slay your your characters or your warlord. And if that's him, then you might prevent your opponent from getting a lot of points there. So pros and cons of this model. Um, I like the fact that he's quick, he's eight inches, so he's keeping up with those new faster units that we've got in the Indominus box set. His stat line is pretty decent. He's not far off being an actual monster unit with that strength 6, toughness 6, and 7 wounds. A living metal will benefit a model like this with those 7 wounds, so it's not going to be easy to chew through all those, especially if he's shielded with those crypto thralls. His weapons in both shooting and combat are pretty decent with a large minus AP buff on both. Always handy. Um, he's stacked with abilities that synergize well with lots of other units, especially warriors and immortals as he's not only adding one to their reanimation, but he's also giving them the augmentations every turn. And they keep that for the rest of the battle, so that's really good. The cryptic keyword is quite handy too. So having them crypto thralls coming around, helping him from being shot by snipers and whatnot, or just any other ranged weapons really. I like also the fact that there's loads of stratagems at the moment that work well with him and units around him. Now again, these may change in the new codex drop, but I, I couldn't imagine every single one of them being changed. So once the codex does come out, we'll be going over his tactics and whatnot again later on. So we'll, we'll have to wait and have a look there. Going through a few cons to the model, um, I'm a bit puzzled with him because he's kitted out like he should be in the enemy's face up and close because his range weapon is only 18 inch and he's got a decent combat weapon. And his anti psycho thing is only 9 inches as well. So I get the feeling he should be up there at the front line. But then he's buffing your warriors and immortals with his augmentation. And they're normally your back line with the guns, sort of second wave or whatnot. So maybe that's where he should be. So maybe that's a pro, really, because he's quite versatile. But it just make, you just got to be sure to think about what you're going to do with him before you do it, before the game. So plan carefully. You could use the strategic reserve rule with uh, him and a warrior blob to get them up the board fast. So you can benefit from having him up there with warriors, but you will lose that turn of shooting from both this model and the warriors. So lots to think about with that one. Um, another one is that is he's got no invan save. So that really sucks because this is a named character. I know he's only a cryptet, but he deserves better than that. He should have had a phase shifter at least. Um, going back to the anti psycho thing, it's only nine inches. It's kind of short, but... Maybe he should be up the in the front lines anyway. So overall, the character is a solid, solid option in the Codex. I'm sure there'll be plenty of combos I've not even mentioned that he could benefit from. He's by no means average, but without that invun, he isn't perfect. So I'm going to be giving him a Planet 40k rating of 4 out of 5. So as I said, if there's anything I've missed, please put it in the comments. We don't get it 100% right, so put them in the comments. We're all learning together in the community. I love hearing about other people's opinions, so throw them down there and I'll respond to them all. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you again in the next Necron video. Mm -hmm.